Guess what time it is? It's time for our last math unit. Is that not so exciting? It's crazy to think that this is the last math unit of fifth grade because we have been through a lot since the beginning of the school year. Um, this unit, I know I said I love unit seven, and I do, I really love unit seven, but I think there are some of the most fun lessons and really interesting stuff that we get to do in unit eight. You know how when we were doing fractions, it really just focused on fractions, and when we were doing decimals, we really just focused on decimals. But in unit eight, we get to do all sorts of stuff. We get to learn measurement, we get to look at data, we get to learn geometry. We have a lot going for us in unit eight. It is a very long unit. I will just tell you, it is the biggest unit, and it's double, more than double the size of unit seven. Think about that for a minute, so see if you can guess how many lessons there are. Anyway, you need out a scarlet color, and this is a lot to get going on your journal, um, so you can start doing it, and I'm just going to talk through it as you go. So we're talking about the metric units of length today. Um, you need to have lesson 8.1 written in a circle and the date. And we first want to talk about what are some things that are measured using length. So we talk about height in length, and we talk about distance. We talk about how long something is or how wide something is, even how tall something is. That would be the height. But what we're going to learn about today is something that not a lot of people living in our country know how to use. But a lot of people throughout the world use this system. And so it's really important for us to learn it so that we can interact and understand the metric units of length. It's called the metric system. And you might have heard of it before. It has to do with things like meters, kilometers, centimeters. Do some of those things sound familiar? If you run a 5K, what you're doing is you're running five kilometers. So it is something that we use and we use as a reference, but what we get to learn is not only how to use it and in what situations we use it, but we get to learn how to convert or how to change from one measurement in the metric system to another. It's pretty cool. So we're gonna be doing what's called unit conversions. Pretty awesome. We're gonna be drawing a lot of things and you're going to have to stay caught up and really be focused more than you've ever been focused during math. Okay? So, if you have not gotten it set up at this point, you do need to push pause on the video. If you're just set up and ready to go, let's just continue. All right. So, the first thing we're going to draw here is a very famous staircase. And it's going to help us know how to do this math. So let's begin by drawing a staircase that begins in the top left and works its way down to the bottom right. So we're going to need seven steps on that staircase. So I'm just going to draw one and you can repeat after me. I got seven. Here's how I know. You ready? I want you to get used to saying this phrase. King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Then you're going to copy all the letters that I'm writing. Remember the first part of what I said? was King Henry. Notice those two letters. The next part of my phrase was doesn't usually. King Henry doesn't usually. Leave it just like that. And then what was the end part of what I said? King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Watch how this is going to get represented. Are 
these ones are lowercase, the top three were uppercase, and the middle one I didn't bold or highlight at all. It's the very middle of the staircase. So King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. On the U for usually, we're going to circle it. And we're going to use the scarlet color to outline our staircase. And I'm going to use this in a lighter way. I'm going to kind of color it in. We have this middle of the staircase here. The metric system works in meters or liters or grams. Today, when we're talking about the metric units of length, we use meters. So this part that we colored as U or usually, there's going to actually be another letter here that represents whatever it is we're talking about. Okay, so I know the phrase is really fun to say, so I'm going to have you whisper say it with me. You're going to owe a stamp if you're really not whisper saying it when it comes to this in the journal. So here we go. King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. It's almost said to a rhythm. Try it with me again. King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Okay, so we're going to write out King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. We're going to write that out over here. Just the letters, King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Okay, what was the phrase again? King Henry doesn't usually, I don't know why I needed another U right there. Drink chocolate milk. King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Okay, well here's what it really means. Okay, I know it's fun to say those things, but they actually all stand for something. Miss Fisher just likes to come up with some fun sayings. Here's what K stands for when we're talking about the metric system. It stands for kilo. And kilo in numbers means a thousand. Okay? We're going to do the K just like the King K. So kilo stands for a thousand. Henry stands for hecto. I should have just called him King Hector, huh? I just thought of that. What hecto means is a hundred. See if you can find a pattern here with the numbers, okay? So kilo hecto. And the next one is deca. It's D-E-K-A. What do you think DECA stands for? Look at the number pattern. We have a thousand, then a hundred, it's ten. You see what's happening here? Usually the U, the U in usually stands for the unit. Okay, so whatever it is that we're talking about, whatever the unit is. In this case today, it's going to be an M for meters, but it's okay. We're just going to use it as unit for right now. And a unit stands for one. 
Look at this place value system we're creating. We have a thousand, then a hundred, then ten, then one. Thinking about the base ten number system, what do you think the next measurement is going to stand for? Like what number will the next measurement stand for? Well, what place value is just smaller than the ones place? The tenths place. You have to know decimals and fractions to understand this. Do you see why we built this up to unit eight? You have to know decimals and fractions to get this. So the D in drink stands for deci, D-E-C-I. And what deci means is one tenth. How else can you write one tenth? Zero point one. It's another way to write one tenth. Okay, the C for chocolate stands for centi. And cent, C-E-N-T, that has a root word for a hundredth, but it's not a hundred because hector already is, it's a hundredth. So let's put that in a fraction, it's one hundredth. How do you write that as a decimal? Zero point zero one. And the M in milk actually stands for milli. I know some of you probably think that it's um, millions, but it's not. Think about our place value system. We have thousand, hundred, ten, one, one tenth, one hundredth. What is this one? One thousandth. How do you represent that as a decimal? Zero point zero zero one. Okay, so now that we have established what it really means, let's say the King Henry part, and then let's replace that saying or that rhythm with the actual metric words. Okay, so I'll do the first time, and then you can try it with me the second time. King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Okay, now I'm going to put in the metric words. Kilo hecto, deca unit de si centi milli. So try the King Henry part with me and then we'll swap over to kilo. Here we go. King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Okay, snap this one. Here we go. Kilo hecto deca unit de si centi milli. Kind of cool. Everybody snap. If you're not snapping, you're going to stamp when you do this in your journal. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Kilo hecto, deca unit, de si centi milli. Okay. So we kind of know now what they look like. All right. There's another way to represent what this is using not just a staircase but using the actual base 10 number system, okay? So there's yet another way to represent this. So let's work with, um, with a place value system, okay? If I have numbers and they are in the thousands, then the hundreds, I'm gonna just draw these. The tens, the ones, the tenths, the hundredths, the thousands. So, sorry, you couldn't see that the whole time. Now you can, I'll wait for you. So I just did seven place values. Let's start with thousands. And we'll just label it all the way down like we know how to with place value. Let's do this one as um, fractions. Where is the decimal in this situation? 
it's in between the holes and the pieces. So you have over here, you have the holes on the left. And then over here on the right, you have pieces. I'm just going to do those a little lighter. So the decimal is in between. Separates holes and pieces. Okay? So this is kilohecto decameter, dec, sorry, it should be unit, sorry, deca unit, deci centimilli. So King Henry, you can do this, doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. The unit is the ones place. Okay, so now I want you to think about what you know about the base 10 number system, and I want you to look at the staircase again. If this is the ones place, as I step up to the left, my numbers are getting bigger. I'm moving up in place value. Right, the size of my pieces are getting bigger as I move up the staircase. What about if I come back to the ones place, which is the unit, what if I move down the staircase? The size of the pieces are getting much, much smaller as I move down the staircase. Okay, so we're going to kind of draw the staircase again. We've got it represented in base 10 system, and we're going to talk about, you know, relative size. Like how much really is a kilo? What is a good example for you to understand how big a kilo actually is? Okay. And when I say kilo, today, because we're talking about length, the unit is called a meter. Okay, so we're just going to put a star here that says the unit for length is meter. It's an M. So I replace the unit with an M for meter. So every time I'm saying something, I'm going to put meter after it. So here's an example. Kilometer. Kilo, kilometer. Kilometer. Hectometer. Hectometer. Decameter. Decameter. Then I just say meter when it comes to the unit. Then I move on to decimeter or decimeter. Then I move on to centimeter, centi or centimeter, centimeter. And then I say milli and then I throw in the unit meter, millimeter. Okay, so here is what um, an example of a kilometer would be. Okay, a kilometer, a real life example of something that would be a kilometer in length would be 10 football fields. We'll say lengths, 10 football field lengths. So you want to run an entire football field 10 times. From one end zone to the other, you do that 10 times and you've gone one kilometer or kilometer. Kilo means a thousand and a meter is like a, a measuring device. In fact, we have a meter stick in the classroom. It's hanging by the front board. So see if you can pay attention or look up at it. It's a meter stick. So it'd be like running a thousand meters. A thousand meters means kilometer or kilometer. Okay, 10 football field lengths is one kilometer. Pretty crazy, huh? Okay, so what's an example of a hectometer? A hectometer would just be like running one football field length. If 
from one end zone to the other. That's a hectometer. I say hectometer, but I'm wondering if the rest of the world calls it hectometer. I don't really know. You can look that up later, but I say hectometer just so I can remember. Um, the next one, a deca. A decameter is kind of like a real life example of a decameter. Might be like the length of a classroom. I'm not talking like when you go to college and you have these huge, giant auditoriums for a classroom. I'm talking like our classroom, the length of it, how long it is. That might be the size, that might be the length of a decameter. Oh, I didn't say meter, sorry. Okay. So what is right here in the ones place that separates the holes from the pieces? The decimal does here, but it's just a meter. An example of a meter would be the measuring stick that's hanging in our classroom. It's a little more than a yard. We're familiar with saying yards, um, but a meter is a little longer than a yardstick. You're welcome to go look at the meter stick that's hanging in the classroom if you want to kind of know how long it is. It's pretty interesting. Okay, what comes after that? So kilo, hecto, decameter, deci. Let's find out how small a decimeter is. You can tell that the length of what's happening is getting drastically smaller. In fact, if you want to know something, for those of you who are pretty bright, it's every time we've listed something, it's been about a tenth of the size of the thing before it. Pretty interesting, huh? Okay, so a decimeter. Something that might be like the size of a decimeter might be like um, maybe your, I don't know, maybe your desk. Yeah. Your desk might be a good example of that. Um, maybe, oh, you know what? I think might be a good example of that is not your desk, because your desk is not going to be like a tenth of that meter stick. So, oh, this is a good idea. What about your pencil box? I bet that's about a decimeter. How long it is might be a decimeter. Okay, the next thing is a centimeter. Think about what might be a tenth of the size of your pencil box. I'll give, they actually give this one as an example a lot. It's the length of a fingernail. Kind of interesting. If you look at maybe your pointer finger, that's probably a decimeter. Oh, sorry, a centimeter. <laughs> Not a decimeter, a centimeter. And then something that's real life, the size of like a millimeter. This one blows my mind. is like the, if you look at the tip of your pencil, it would be like the length of your tip of a pencil. Crazy, crazy small. So here's what that means. It means there are 10 millimeters in every centimeter. And then there are 10 centimeters in every decimeter. So how many millimeters are there in a decimeter? Well, you would do 10 times 10. So there's a hundred millimeters in a decimeter. Pretty cool. How many decimeters are in the meter? 10. How many meters are in a decameter? 10. It's always 10 of the one, it takes 10 of the one below it to get to it. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like there's 10 hect hectometers in a kilometer. Well my question then is, if I go from meter to kilometer, so middle of the staircase to the top of the staircase or if I go from the unit, the meter, all the way over here to the kilometer. It's like moving how many place values? It'd be moving one, two, three place values. Go back to the staircase and think about that. How many stairs did it go up to get from the unit to the kilo? 
Are you seeing how those relate? It's pretty interesting. Really, really interesting. But I like to give some real life examples of what this size really is. As we're talking about it, I think it's important for you to know real life situations of what these things are measured. Okay, so let's just say um, real world lengths. That's what all of that was, was some real world lengths. I'm going to draw the staircase one more time over here to the right and kind of towards the bottom because I want to explain that each step is 10 times greater or 10 times smaller depending on which way you go. Okay, so we're going to draw the staircase again. Maybe I'm going to start it like up here. If you say the phrase as you draw it, it's going to help you memorize it. So as I drew it, I went kilo and then I went a stair, facto, decameter, deci, centi, milli. So it kind of looks crazy right now until I start to put the letters in, right? Put all the cap, the first three are capital, helps me remember that they're big. That unit in this case is meters because we're talking about how long something is. Okay, that is essentially what I want you to get used to, is being able to draw the staircase, understand that it's about place value, and how we move from one place to another. Okay, so um, <laughs> this is a really interesting thing. Um, Let's just do it like this. You always want to start your staircase up here on the left and move down to the right. Anytime when you're moving down the staircase, you're multiplying. Okay, you're going to be doing a multiplication thing. It doesn't make a lot of sense maybe right now, but we'll talk about it on the next page and in the next video. So what do you think is going to happen so think about going down the steps. If I go up the steps, I'm doing the opposite of what I just did, right? So what do you think is going to happen if instead of going down the steps, I go up the steps? What do you think happens if I go up the steps? Division. So you really have to understand place value and how to move decimals and what's happening to numbers as you convert them. So at the bottom we're going to write this. Each step is 10 times greater or 10 times smaller depending on which way you go. It's pretty important to remember that. Each step is 10 times greater. or 10 times smaller. Depending on which way you go. So when I say that, I'm talking like, are you moving up the staircase or are you moving down the staircase? So I kind of want to draw my arrows like diagonal. Okay, which way are you going on that staircase? Because the way you go matters. And you might be like, what are you talking about the way we go? You'll see as we tried to ask you to form um, an answer about conversions. Like if I have 12 kilometers, how many meters is that? That's called a unit conversion. So that's what we're going to be working on. All right. I will catch you in the next video where we will talk more about unit conversions.